Hello boys and girls, this is Jan for Chess24 with another Game of the Day video. We are going back to Wijk an Zee, the Dutch town where the first chess super tournament of the year 2021 is taking place. And as Game of the Day, I have chosen an encounter between Niels Grandelius, the Swedish number one, Scandinavian number two behind a certain Magnus Carlsen. But in the world, he's around number 60, 70, while he is facing a top 5, 6 player, I think, before this game. Um, Maxime Schiller Graf, number 6 in the world, also the co-leader of the candidates tournament, which makes him a likely challenger for Magnus Carlsen. And Niels Grandelius, with the white pieces, goes for 1e4, as he tends to do. MVL sticks to his main opening, which is the Sicilian, plays 2d6, and we get the infamous Nydorf on the board, as you can see by my fantastic arrow work here. I probably forgot some arrow. Um, White has quite a few moves in this position, but Niels goes for arguably the most aggressive move, and what's sort of ironic about playing the most aggressive move in 2021 is that the most aggressive move can at the same time be the safest move in the position. And my reasoning for calling it both the most aggressive and the safest move is that after bishop g5, e6, you get a lot of mind-blowing, incredibly complicated lines. But these lines are very well analyzed with modern engines. And they're quite forcing. So I do like the choice by, by Niels because he's saying, you know what, Maxim? I like active chess, but I also am well prepared. And if you want to get winning chances as a stronger player, you have to do something really outrageous. Well, if you follow the mainline theory, what's going to happen is I will ask a small question. If you're able to answer that, the game will be in draw. If you're not able to answer that, you will be in trouble. Therefore, I think this gives Niels excellent expected value out of this game, choosing a very direct opening, bishop g5 and f4. And Vielk does go for the most principal move, queen to b6, counterattacking against b2. This move was a favorite of Robert James Fisher, Garry Kasparov, many of the greats. And Grandelius is not afraid to sacrifice this pawn. All of this well-established has been seen many a time. White loses a pawn, but he gains a lead in development. And in order to use that, he will try to open the position. Niels does that by pushing his pawn to f5. The alternative is putting the pawn to e5 here, which also leads to crazy sharp play. Let's look at a line after e5. Why not? This is pretty typical stuff. White is, what, three pawns down? But the pieces are all over the place, and both sides have to be incredibly precise. Not what Niels wanted. He goes for pawn to f5. More classical way to play in a sense. He's trying to put pressure on the e6 pawn. Take here, then put his bishop on c4 and force concessions in the black structure. Maxime plays bishop e7, a move he's played plenty in the recent past as well, so not a surprise. This is maybe nowadays the main line. In the old days, knight c6 was somewhat more popular, challenging the knight on d4 so that white can't just, you know, use this knight as an attacking piece. But the drawback is that here, after knight takes c6, b takes c6, this rook gains an open file and play continues to be incredibly sharp after bishop e2, pawn to e5. There's all kinds of sharp, crazy stuff to know as well. Where white, if he knows what he's doing, does not encounter any risk, if we're being honest. So, Maxim sticks to his guns, bishop to e7, and Niels takes on e6. Now we see the point of bishop e7, but also the problem with it in a way, is that black has to recapture with the bishop here, trying to develop quickly. If he just took with a pawn, then after bishop to c4, since there's no knight on c6, which can be exchanged here, the black position just collapses. There's no sensible way to defend this e-pawn. If it advances, white just jumps in. 
Not gonna end well. Of course. Both players know all this. MVL has had this line with bishop takes e6 on the board plenty of times. Allowing Niels, of course, very targeted preparation. But the line itself is solid. And nowadays, at the highest level, if you believe in your line, you just stick to it. Knight takes e6, f takes e6, bishop c4. I'm not sure I just said that. If this statement, if you believe in your line, you just stick to it, is always true because, of course, surprise value is very, very important. But Maxime decides there's nothing wrong with going here again, he feels. He can handle this. We see the point of Black's play. He does not try to defend the pawn on e6, but he brings this knight into the action quickly, saying, please take, I will go knight c5, and I will have enough counterplay, attacking the bishop and targeting this pawn. This is the first real crossroads from a theoretical perspective. White players have tried different moves here. Bishop to f5 has been played, bishop to c4 has been played, and bishop to b3 has also been played. Niels decides to go for bishop to b3. A brief survey on the other moves, very brief, just to give you an idea how this play can go. Bishop to f5 is often met by pawn to g6, chasing it away further. Bishop to h3, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, queen to d4. Now the best move for black is queen c3 check, takes, takes, bishop takes e7. The best move is to just recapture. Rook takes b7, check, king f6, let's say short castles, check, king g5. And if black knows what he or she is doing here, the game should end in a draw. But black still has to be precise. Still, MVL was no doubt ready for this, and Niels decides not to check it out. Karana played bishop c4 once against Maxim Vashela Graf, and Maxim fell for a very deep trick here. I'm not sure, maybe he was aware of it. But he allows this move bishop f7 check, after which the force play continues. This is almost impossible to calculate, but if you have a computer engine, it will tell you that white is better here after queen a5 check, king to d1, the star move, not going for bishop d2, queen to e5 with the queen exchange. But after king to d1, it turns out that even though black is a piece up, it's black who's under pressure. This was the course of the game, I think. Maxim lost in the end, yes, Stavanger 2019. Karana would go on to win this. So why does Niels not repeat the move bishop c4? I think the reason is that after bishop c4, takes is not necessary, and rook to c8, keeping an eye on this bishop, gives black a decent position. Therefore, Grandelius tries to, you know, be somewhat more precise. He goes bishop b3, saying, you can still take the pawn. Then we shall transpose with bishop f7 check. Cute little move, by the way. But if you do not take the pawn, if you play rook c8, as in the game, then my bishop won't be all loose on that c4 square. So rook c8 played. I believe this was still played fairly quickly, so probably both sides. Still in book here. Niels certainly still in his preparation. Goes short castles. Black has nothing better than capturing on b3. Knight takes e4, would ask a little much from the position after knight e4, knight e4, bishop f7, check. Black just loses. So this bishop has to go, knight takes b3, rook takes b3, queen c5, check, bishop to e3, and queen to c4. All of it still known to the theory books. If there are theory books anymore, this has been played in correspondence chess. The, I don't know what to call it, the long form of chess where people can spend some time on their moves, can use engines, and it's often a good testing ground for these very, very sharp Sicilian battles. And all games I saw in correspondence continue with rook to f4 here, and black in every single one of them. Played the best move, knight to h5, chasing this rook away. Which, maybe from a practical perspective, was not what Maxime was dreaming of, because no matter where this rook goes, let's say f3 or f5, the knight has to return, and white can, of course, repeat moves here. There's no real way for black to deviate. Niels certainly was still in his preparation here, as mentioned. This has been played. He chose this line very targeted, very specifically, as MVL had gone for this plenty. And I'm not sure if he had 
some idea in the back of his head after Knight H5, or if he just wanted to say, you know what, if you remember everything, Mr. Maxim Vashilagrav will make a draw. I do not know. Certainly, it was a good choice because Maxim does not go Knight H5. But instead, he gives up a pawn with Queen to E6. He's saying, you know what, you were threatening pawn to E5, attacking my Queen. I have to move it. And if the Queen were to go to C6, White would just put a lot of pressure with Knight D5 since this bishop now is not covered by the queen after knight d5. The black position is pretty much unbearable. So Maxim, not going for this knight h5, goes for queen to e6. But now the pawn does get taken. And as we know, a pawn is a pawn, rook takes b7. This is the end of the opening. It was the first time Grandelius took real time to make sure he can just grab this pawn. He does take it. Maxim finishes development is a pawn down but at least his king got into safety Granilius keeps playing well here is not in a hurry plays the move pawn to h3 how quickly things could go wrong even in such a nice position for example you could see if white plays the natural knight d5 knight takes d5 e takes d5 black goes queen g6 sneaky move counter attacking against c2 and after rook takes e7 Rook takes f4, bishop takes f4, rook takes c2. All of a sudden, black wins because of the queen moves away. It's checkmate. Of course, it wasn't going to happen just to show how many resources there are, even in such a position. But Grandelius plays nice and slow, plays h3, giving his king some more space, covers the g4 square, rook to b8. MVL understands he has to exchange his active rook. And rook a7, another precise move, saying, you know what, we can exchange rooks, but please put your rook in the corner, not on the active file. Takes, takes. Knight to d5. Niels now rushes into action. Computers say queen d3 was even stronger, keeping his options open. But knight d5, not giving away the advantage. Rook to b8, pawn to c4. And MVL is trying not to touch this knight because he does not want to repair the white pawn structure with these two isolated pawns. But probably his best chance here was to capture after e takes d. Go away with the queen. When obviously white is better with his extra pawn, but with the active pieces, somewhat weakened white king and Maxim Vashila Graf behind the black pieces. This would still have been a lot of work for Nils. Instead, Maxim tries to play around this knight. Bishop d8, but now Niels Grandelius starts bringing his pieces closer to the Black King in typical Magnus Carlsen style, who also likes, you know, just moving his piece toward the king, attacking it there without any shenanigans, without any sacrifices, just good, clean chess. Queen f2, knight d7, bishop d4, all the pieces get to good positions. Bishop g5, Maxim is trying to defend with bishop h6, rook to f5, and bishop to h6. King to h2, rook to c8. Should be said that king h2 is a nice little move in the style of Gary Kasparov, not really hurrying with anything, saying, I just want to get my king out of any checks before we jump into action. And if black were to capture this pawn, he would regret it, because rook f7, targeting the knight, playing knight e7 check, pretty much destroys the black position. So Maxim goes rook c8, has to wait passively, hopes that maybe he can take this pawn. But once again, Niels says, you know what? Take the pawn, be my guest. And once again, it should not be taken because Grandelius has spotted a nice trick after rook takes c4. If you're watching at home, want to do some calculating, you can pause the video here and try to figure out how white wins here. Not saying it's the only way, but it is a beautiful way to win. Queen to b3, targets the rook, who can't really get covered, so it should move. Might as well take here. And now knight e7 check. The queen cannot take because it's check. So the king has to go. And queen takes e6 would be good enough, but if you want style points, you can also go for queen b8, knight b8, rook f8, and checkmate next move. So long story short, you cannot touch either pawn here. Queen takes e4. Also not great after queen takes d6. 
and Maximilian Schiller Graf plays the move pawn to g6. But Niels makes three star moves in a row and pretty much finishes the game. So let's see if we can find them all together. Star move number one. Queen to h4. Nice move. Targets the bishop. Keeps an eye on the e7 square. Says, you know what? If you take my rook, I will recapture. And your position will collapse if you take here. This knight fork will come. If you go somewhere else, the knight fork will still come. Your bishop is also hanging. I would win. So you can't take. Therefore, the bishop has to go. Bishop f8 tries to cover this square. But we're not done. Next powerhouse of a move. Rook to f6. If this rook gets captured, once again, the black position collapses. Some tactics, but pretty trivial at this level. Knight to g4. In order to defend this bishop, rook g8 has to be played. Knight h6. King f8. And takes, takes. Queen h8. White, at the end of the line, gets a winning pawn end game. Because two extra pawns matter in pawn end games. So, once again, the rook could not be taken. Maxim tries to keep the position together by going queen to e8, but the third blow in a row forces black to take this rook and pretty much ends the game because the rook says, you know what, I'll just take here. Good luck ignoring me now. And turns out this is decisive. After knight takes f8, knight f6 picks up the queen. After king takes f8, queen h6 picks up the king, for example. How do we do this? Checkmate. And after queen takes f8, which was played in the game, knight e7 check. Picks up, at the very least, another pawn. After king f7, knight takes c8. I believe Maxim Vashila Grav resigned here because if queen c8, queen h7. White wins another two pawns with the check. And being three pawns up with a raging attack is not exactly the type of position you want to defend at this level. So, Niels Grandelius wins another game in Vaik Anze. If we look at the standings, we can see that he has won three games out of the first five, which is pretty impressive as... I think he's the second lowest rated player <clears throat> going into this tournament. But he's been crushing it so far. Taking the lead, as you can see at the time of recording. Some games were still ongoing. Magnus Carlsen could still catch him. But great stuff by Niels Grandelius. I know both Niels and Maxim reasonably well um, from the Magnus Carlsen second teams. Um we spent some time together in the Norwegian wilderness in Kragerø with Maxim and Niels. We were locked up there for quite a while with Niels. I also spent a month in Thailand, so I know everything about Mr. Grandelius, his sleeping habits, his eating habits, and his habits against the Nidorf, which we learned today, were pretty impressive. I... Asked him how it went, and in typical humble fashion, he said that, of course, it helped that maybe Maxim did not exactly know the opening. I think he meant his position after rook f4, where black has to play knight h5. Um, but he was also very happy that he actually managed to win the position, because everyone knows how incredibly tenacious, resourceful Maxim Vashila Graf is. Niels mentioned that he had a similar outcome of the opening in a game against Maxim in the German Bundesliga already, where he had an extra pawn in great position. Did not manage to win, so he was very happy to take it this time. He is also the man who coined the phrase, chess is always interesting and fun. So he might be having even more fun than usual this time around. Thank you guys. I hope you had fun watching this video until the very end. And I'll see you in the next one.